you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, our God, our great God. Our great God, who is great and greatly to be praised. So we praise him today. We lift him up. We magnify his name because he is good and he's merciful towards his people. His grace abounds to us all. And his mercies are new every single morning. Every morning, Lord, we realize how much you love us. Because you have given us another day. This gift, oh God, of life. This gift that we dare not take for granted. So today, oh God, we praise you. We lift up your holy name. Recognizing that you are the King of Kings and you are the Lord of Lords. You are the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the, be the beginning and the end. Lord, everything revolves around you. Lord, you are the center of our joy. So we praise you today. We praise your name. You deserve it. You deserve every bit of praise, O oh God, that our lips can utter. Sometimes words fail us. Sometimes words do not do our praise justice. But yet, Lord, we praise you anyhow. We lift you up anyhow. We adore you, Lord. We extol you. We exalt you. Lord, in all of your majesty, in all of your wonder, all of the wondrous works that you do, oh God, we will never take it for granted. So this morning, Father, we praise you and we ask oh god that you bless us in a very special way today let your word oh god speak to us and pierce our very hearts so that it would find root it will take root and cause our lives to become so transformed that the more we walk on this journey with you oh god it's the more we start to look like you it's the more father we represent you, even in the earth. So help us, Lord. Help us always, always to read your word and to hear what it says about us. Help us, O oh God, as we look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith. You, O oh God, who began a great work in us is more than able to complete it. So, Lord, we rest in you now. We stand in you, knowing, oh God, that you will cause us to stand after we have done everything to stand. So, we praise you now. Lord, take charge of the airwaves and cause your word today to come through with power, with anointing, and with clarity, oh God. That's our desire. That's our prayer to hear from you. So we invite you now in our midst because every single time, oh God, we do that, you come. You come, oh God, and you leave a word with us that takes us not only through the day, but through the rest of the week, the rest of the month, Lord, and would stay with us even for the rest of our lives. So we give you praise now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, friends. Good morning. This is Diane. And I'm coming to you today with another word of encouragement. I am coming to you today, friends, with another word from the word of God. And you know that I've always expressed that it's my hope that your life is encouraged you are motivated to carry on for Christ you are strengthened in your inner man it is my hope friends that something you hear today will give you that extra push to push your way 
through with God. Something will uplift your life because I'm telling you friends, every one of us at some point or another will have something that challenges our lives. Something that crops up, something that comes up, something that you never bargained for. But I'm telling you, despite what even the adversary does or what he's doing, because you see, he's an underminer. He doesn't like us. He doesn't like us because of our position in Christ. He was once in God's presence, serving him, and he allowed pride and bad-mindedness, as I always say, to get him kicked out. So he's now among us, roaming and walking around, seeking whom he may devour, seeking whom he may drag to hell with him. But today, friends, we have made up our minds that that will not be us because God is on our side. And even though he comes with his wicked schemes and devices to push us off course, we will stay the course in God. If we fall, we will get back up again. We will brush off ourselves and we will say, Lord, let's do this again. We will not stay there. We will not become so discouraged or so depressed that we cannot push our way through. That's what the devil wants. He wants us to give up, throw in the towel, you know, just forget about God. But friends, when we recognize that the Lord is there with us, we don't allow it. We see the ways that the adversary tries to creep in and we push back. We push back with prayer. We push back with God's word. We push back with fasting. All of those spiritual disciplines that helps us to hold on to God. All right, because he's there. Today, I want to talk to us about the Lord. He will cause us to stand. The Lord will cause us to stand even in the midst of difficulties, in the midst of plots, in the midst of schemes. Because I'm telling you, the devil, he's in the details at times. Some of the things that we look at as random and it's just life. And friends, the devil is in the details. All right. The Lord allows some things to come our way so that we can learn from it. We can learn there is something there for us that will make us better, will make us stronger, and would even turn us into encouragers for others. Because remember, the things that we experience, it's not for us alone, but it's for somebody else who is coming. Some say, well, why do I have to be the lab rat? Why do I have to be the guinea pig? Why do I have to be the one to go through so that I can help somebody else come through. And some do not like the fact that the Lord is using their lives to, you know, to build others. But I'm telling you, friends, there is value in that. There is value in you going through so that you can help somebody else come through. There is value in those negative experiences that you had that the Lord is now using to deliver others. There is value in that, my friends. Yes, the road gets rough at times. Sometimes you are betrayed. You are lied on. You are knocked about. You are kicked about. And then you are reminded every single time you are getting, you know, the, the, the kickings and the, the beatings. You are reminded that God is there. Leave it to God. All of that. Listen, friends, I used to get upset. Let me be real with you. I used to get vexed at times. When I see how, you know, the devil used some people to just try, I, and I use the word try, to dismantle my life. And then I'm being told, oh, just leave it in God's hands. You know, I you want to say to somebody, oh, you could say that because you're not the one going through. But I'm telling you, friends, it, it took a lot. There were times when I failed the test. I, I'll be the first to confess that. There were times when I failed the test. You understand? When I felt like cussing them, and I did, I cussed them. I'm not proud of it, no, but I'm saying I let them have it. Right? I had to ask the Lord to help me. Help me with my mouth and my attitude and how I view things and my perspective. 
I had to say, Father, help me. He's still working on me and I'm sure he's working on you as well. So y'all don't judge me. <laughs> you hear that, right? You know, that's what the world says. When we want to excuse, you know, the stuff that we do, that we know that we deliberately did them and we knew they were wrong from the beginning. But listen, friends, if we would judge ourselves, then we would not be judged. If we would judge ourselves, if we would run to God when we know that we're in the wrong, then nobody have to point the finger and say anything anyway. But I'm saying, friends, there were times when I failed the test. When I said, no, sir, this can't go, sir. I have to fix this. And you know what I realized? The more I tried to fix sometimes, the more it got worse. Honestly, I'll, t I'll tell you that right now. That my idea and my way never always worked. No, truth be told. And then I had to learn. So this is what I'm saying. We're going to go through the motions. We're going to go through the hurt and the pain, all of that. We're going to feel all of the emotions that comes with being persecuted or, you know, being, being just buffeted by the adversary. You're going to feel them. You're human. You, that's where we should say we're human. You are not exempt from feeling a kind of how. All right? We're not exempt. But I'm saying the Lord will make a way. I had to learn over time that yes, it's true. There are some battles that you just don't fight because you see the adversary, he wants to wear you out. He wants to get you tired and fed up and depressed and let you tell yourself, I'm done with church, I'm done with God, I'm done with them people there. You know, the whole of them wicked and them a hypocrite and them do this. Listen, many of us have been there. Those who don't want to admit it, well, more power to you. Right, But I can tell you that there will be times and if it hasn't happened yet to you, it's going to. Where you feel like just throwing in the towel because of what you're going through. Because of the mess, the strife, the confusion. It's like some people like if them not have mess and confusion around them in terms of they creating it for others, like they cannot be comfortable I've seen it. They always have to be in some kind of thing. You understand? I'm saying, friends, the devil uses people. That's why I said to you earlier, he's in the details of some of these things. Sometimes people are fighting against you. They undermine you. Who you think put that idea in their head? The devil. The devil. Who you think encouraged them or motivated them to tell that big fat lie? The devil. Who do you think is behind the plot to get you fired from your job? Who do you think is behind all of those schemes to make your life miserable, to make it a living hell? As the saying goes, it's the devil. But today, friends, I want to encourage you because the Lord will cause you to stand. There is nothing like vindication that comes from the Lord after you have gone through, after you have been through the fire. The Lord will vindicate you. He will cause you to stand despite what the enemy does. Listen, there are a lot of people now watching your life and they're wondering, how come you're not dead yet? Based on all that they have done against your life, they are wondering, how come you're still standing? How come you still have the work? How come your husband not left you yet? How come your children are still saved? I'm telling you, the devil, he's a liar. And he uses people, those who will allow him to use them to try and buffet that Christian's life. But you see, we serve a sovereign God who knows the end from the beginning and he just stays there sometimes and he's, he's carrying you, you know, but it feels like he's not there and you feel alone and you feel like nobody cares and like the whole world is against you. And that's what the devil says. He says, hey, nobody not like you. You know, see, nobody not like you. 
Listen, friends, the devil is a liar. There is more with you than with those who are against you. Do not allow the devil this week. Listen, when you look and you see that the Lord allowed you to see the second to last day in August 2019, you should just be shouting all over the place. You should just be giving God praise despite what the adversary is trying to do in your life otherwise trying to discourage you trying to get you to throw in the towel trying to get you to cost somebody no friends hang in there hang in there the lord will vindicate i'm telling you i'm a living witness i'm a living proof that the lord is a great vindicator and it doesn't matter where some of the accusations come from whether they come from high or low the lord is there with you you stand your ground right you stand you you plant your feet in god and you make the devil know say look here me now move you understand you stand your ground. I've seen some people rise up against my life. I'm, I, I just want to talk reality with us today. Right? And I tell you, it hurt bad. And you don't, well, some of you don't kind of figure that my temperament. Right? I don't stand for foolishness. And even when you, you know, you open your mouth and you declare God in the midst of all of that, people get vexed. So what they do, they go for their their partners and you know i see two of our friends here miss simone and miss cindy talking about their partners in good crime first they started out with this partner in crime i said uh, 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 y'all ain't no partner in no crime here because crime ain't nothing good then they start to add the word good <laughs> right i'm just troubling them but seriously right you they get their backup they they run for their people who will help them to build their case against their life it's like Jezebel and I keep making reference to Jezebel because when I see how wicked that particular woman was in the Bible, the things that she did, right? Writing letters and gathered accusers against Naboth so that she could get his vineyard for her husband, right? Who I would consider maybe a little wimp because he sat down and allowed his wife to get a man killed just to get something that he wanted. That's the power of Jezebel. Fight, fight you, fight against your life, fight you everywhere you turn, just a fight. Fight at home, fight on, on the job, fight in the church, fight in the community. That's the devil, friends. That's what I'm saying. He's trying to get you to feel like you're a nobody. And that is why sometimes people don't understand why some Christians commit suicide. Some don't understand the level that persons, the devil, he pushes some people. He backs them into a corner and he says to them, look around, you have no way out. That's how he comes to choke the life out of you. That's why I always say the Jezebel spirit and the spirit of the python walks hand in hand because the python squeezes. Because you see, that's what the devil wants. He's not going to stop squeezing until you die. That's what he wants. But I'm here to declare to you today, my friends, that you are a victor. You are an overcomer and the more they pile dirt on your life, it's the more you are able to use that and to rise above it. Like the story of the donkey that fell into the place or they wanted to get rid of. And the more they shoveled dirt on him, the more he hopped on it. He hopped on it. And that dirt, all of that dirt that was shoveled on him to kill him, that's what he used to get out of that well. And I'm saying, friends, these things that you go through will eventually build your life if you don't allow it to kill you in the process. You hang in there with God and watch him shape your life. Have you ever seen a pot being made, a clay pot, a clay jar? It's a lot of work. And that's how we are in the hand of God. All right, he's the pot and we are the clay. It's a process and sometimes we get 
marred in the hands of the potter. There, there is a passage about that and that is when some people, they, they turn on God and they blame him and they say, God, look what you did. Look what you allowed to happen. I was only trying to serve you. I was only trying to do good. I was only trying to help them. I was only trying to do the right thing. Now look what happened. I should have just left it there, left that there. I should have just minded my own business. Friends, I have been there. I have been there. I know. I know. I know. When you do good and it just backfires. I have a friend, a very good friend of mine. He's an attorney. He's the first one that said to me one time, and I'd, I'd never, before that, I'd never heard the phrase before. He said to me, no good deed goes unpunished. And apparently it's a popular phrase, but I'd never heard it before. No good deed goes unpunished. And that, that is self-explanatory. It's like the more you do good, the more evil presents itself. Where your motives are twisted and you're misunderstood. People read you wrong. And because of that, you know, they attack your life. And that's why I'm saying to us today, we must be strong. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He has given us the tools, friends, the weapons for us to stand against the enemy. And once we utilize them, he will cause us to stand. Because the Lord already made a way for us to succeed. The devil doesn't want us to succeed. He wants our lives to fail. He wants our marriages to fail, to break down for you and your spouse, to quarrel night and day until somebody mentioned the D word. That's what he wants. He doesn't like unity. He doesn't like unity in families. He doesn't like unity in the church. And he does not like unity in the nation. He is the author of confusion. He is. He is the one that stirs up strife in every scenario that he can. And when he sees it's not working one way, he tries it one way. So if he sees you and your husband having a loving relationship filled with the fullness of God, loving God, serving God, apart from trying to get one of you to go astray, if he sees that's not working, then he gathers his group hiding out and camping out in the church. I say hiding out and camping out because it looks to me like some people have totally sold out to the devil, but they still come to church. That's like a little hiding place because behind the halls or within the halls of religion and spirituality, that's what I call it. It's like they get to do those things that looks like God. So many are fooled. But I'm telling you, some of the most devious and I'm so serious about this. Some of the most devious, wicked and corrupt people camp out in churches at times. Used by the enemy. They're on the devil's side. They're wolves in sheep's clothing. You understand? And you have some shepherds like that too. But that's another story. You understand that fights the people of God. The genuine people of God, they don't like truth. They don't like truth. Anytime you start to speak truth, look at the ones who squeal out. And I'm talking about people in the body of Christ. Whenever you start to speak what God says, look at those who get upset in the church. Some of them don't fool me, friends. I see the way they react to the things of God, the genuine things of God. I'm not talking about when people come with foolishness, not that kind of thing, because we're not idiots here. There are some people who comes to church people like, well, some so gullible anyway, so they can sell them anything, anything. Just wrap it in some pretty paper and church people ready to buy it. That is why so many prophets are profiting off the people of God, because we're not paying attention. It's like a business now. If you want to make money in your church, just invite a profit. P-R-O-F-I-T. They will do a good job. And before you know it, they're squabbling behind the scenes about money. Money not share good. Money not share upright. This is not what we agreed on. Can you, can you imagine? I'm telling you, you know, friends, the devil is in the details. He comes at us in so many different ways. 
but the Lord will cause us to stand despite the mess that goes on around us from time to time. A lot of, thi a lot of things, they happen secretly, but the Lord see it. And sometimes even when we come together, collectively either in the church or even as a nation we don't understand the things that happen to us at times why sometimes it seems as if we have kindled the wrath of God against us it's because of the secret things the hidden things the secret sins are touching everything this morning as the Lord leads so friends listen once your heart is right your heart is pure and your hands are clean, the Lord will cause you to stand. That's what I'm saying. That's the main thing. He will cause you to stand. Let's read what the word of God is saying. 2 Samuel 22, 34 declares, He maketh my feet like hinds feet and setteth me upon my high places. And the Amplified says, he makes my feet like the hinds, firm and able. He sets me secure and confident upon the heights. And then Habakkuk 3.19 declares, The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hinds' feet. You all know what the hind is, right? It's a dare. It's a dare, and the legs are very strong. I had gone over this before in a previous uh, devotion, but for the benefit of those who may not have listened to that one, the reason why we're being compared or why this is being used in this way, the hinds feet, they're very strong. The dare, that dare, very strong. And that is why sometimes you see them on the mountaintops. Because they are built that way. They're built for the terrain. They're built for the rough places. Sometimes we, we even see goats. You know what I mean? It's two different animals. But in, in some places you'd pass and see the, the goats on the mountains, on the hills. And sometimes you wonder how in the world did they get up there? And they're just on the edge and they're not falling. And you're like, wow, look at that. That's how the Lord makes us. He will make our feet like hinds feet to help us to get over the rough terrain. So that's what I'm saying. The Lord has given us the tools to make it. So do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. Do not allow the adversary to intimidate you or to tell you any foolishness. All right? You will stand in God. You will. Ephesians 6.13 says, Wherefore, Take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. All right. So after you have done everything that it takes to stand, you stand. All right. Stand in God, friends. Let me read this for you from our devotional by Sarah Young, Jesus Always. And then I'll pray. Listen to this. I'm reading it at the end today, but you stay with me. I make your feet like the feet of a deer. I enable you to stand on the heights. I created deer with the ability to climb steep mountains with ease and to stand on the heights with confidence. Your trust in me can give you confidence to walk and make progress upon your high places of trouble, responsibility, or suffering. It's crucial to remember that you live in a world where your spiritual enemies never declare a truce. You all hear that? You live in a world where your spiritual enemies never declare a truce. So friends, this is why you go through one thing, you come out of that, and another one starts. And it seems like such is the pattern of your life. But I'm telling you, you will have victory even in that. So you need to stay alert and be ready for battle. Unlike warriors with servants to help them put on their gear, you must make the effort to armor yourself each day. No matter what happens, I want you to be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand. When you're in the thick of battle, declare your trust in me, your confidence that I am with you, helping you, 
You may feel as if you're losing the battle, but don't give up. Hold tightly to my hand and just keep standing. This is victory. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Friends, we, we have no idea sometimes who is on our side. It is Jehovah Gibor, our mighty warrior. He fights for us, friends. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you, the Lord don't make joke when it comes to defending his people. So that's what I'm saying. Do not let the adversary intimidate you in any way, either through sickness, because that's one way he comes. He comes, he attacks your life through sickness. And he tries to get you to worry because the doctor tells you that you know they saw something and they have to run more tests and you worry and you worry and you worry no start declaring that you are the healed of God you are the healed of God it doesn't matter what the illness is speak life over yourself do not agree with the adversary remember he doesn't have anything good he is an accuser of the brethren he he just finds ways to mess us up so we we have no part on his side of the fence and that's why as Christians we cannot be doing that we cannot have one foot over there and one no let us trust God wholeheartedly wholeheartedly and he will bring us through the hard and difficult times I'm telling you friends sometimes the adversary has you marked out for all type of mess but the Lord has you marked for goodness he knows the plans that he has for our lives it's a plan to prosper us all right to bring us to an expected end the devil cannot kill what God has ordained to live a lot of times we get fearful and anxious because we're like okay I believe you know you know, this may not go. Listen, do not agree with the adversary, my friends. Tell him go so. And you keep on trusting and believing God. All right? Sometimes you come upon some challenges and you could see where he's just trying to mess with you the whole time. I mean, after coming through that category one, well, thank God it didn't deal with us. In any you know serious way thank God thank God for his mercy on the islands thank God and we just pray for those you know who that hurricane is heading their way and we'll pray for them in a moment but I'm just saying after going through you know that situation I'll call it on Wednesday and fared well the Lord was merciful you know started my day quite nicely yesterday you know we were here for our devotion and as the day progressed i could tell you that devil doesn't like when you're joyful or you're happy you know it's just a, a situation a very frustrating situation that just arose and i could see the devil in the details i'm, I'm telling you friends sometimes the devil set you up really good you know and if you're not paying attention, it, it just slips by you and create havoc in your life. But yesterday, I had to say, Father, you know, just help me to stay on this straight and narrow. Because yesterday was one of those days that I felt like squeezing somebody, like seriously, seriously. And I said, Lord, you're not going to bring me through a storm the day before. You know, to have me lose the battle today in this situation here. So I just ask the Lord to help. It's something business-wise, you know, where I see where the devil just trying to mess me up all the time. Because of the work that I do. The work that I do to help others, to help people, to help them, help them. There are some stuff that I do, it's mainly to help people and I see where the devil is trying to mess with that but under God it will not happen he will not frustrate me away from what the Lord has called me to to help others 
I see he comes at me like that all the time in the areas where I try to help others. But it's not going to happen. I'm declaring it. He's not going to push me off this so that when people need help, they can't get the help that they need. So look for him. He's going to come, friends, in all types of ways. Anything that you're doing that pleases and honors God, always remember that he doesn't like it. Anything that you're doing that pleases and honors God, the devil is going to fight it. He's going to fight you. So that's why I mentioned earlier that he sometimes comes in the form of trying to attack your marriage. Right? He tries to attack your family life, those things that are near and dear to God and also important to you so he comes after them your children and that's why we have to keep each other covered so i don't see why the fighting and the strife and the confusion that's why i tell you that you can always tell who are the undercover demons in the churches you can tell listen you're not accusing anybody of anything they always show themselves at a certain point if you observe anybody and anything that's fighting against righteousness and holiness and goodness, watch them carefully. Like seriously. Sometimes it's right in front of our eyes, but some of us are so deep. You don't need discernment for all of that. Sometimes they show you. It's right there in your face. But, you know, we like to give everybody the benefit of the doubt and listen. The devil is using some people to create havoc. So yes, let us be vigilant, prayerful, watchful. Let's pay attention, friends. Let's not be naive and gullible and foolish and believe that because people come speaking the name of the Lord and speaking in tongues that they're always right and they're saved and they're for God. The devil knows how to do that. Matthew 7, 21, that, that should be key. All right? Let's ask the Lord, yes, to turn up our level of discernment. Yes, that's necessary. But Matthew 7, 21, not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, and I'm finding that. I'm really, really finding that. The confusion people, always fighting, bad-minded, jealous, envious, covetous, backbiting, gossiping, those people that tear and drag people down. You understand? Trying to destroy them. I was saying to a friend yesterday and she laughed, but I was so serious. I said, watch the people who are always trying to get you to talk about people's wigs and their weaves. You know, that's just putting it lightly. Right? What does that have to do with anything? How does that affect the price of rice? Sometimes they call prayer meeting and you might turn up early. And before you know it, the, the prayer meeting turned into a gossip club. Things like that. And when you speak out and you stand out, people get upset with you. When you don't want to be a part of their prayer groups because they're gossiping more than they're praying, they say you're holier than thou. Listen, friends, don't be afraid to take a stand for God. And when you go wrong, expect to have real people around you that will tell you you're wrong. I don't know what is wrong with some of us. We don't want to hear you're wrong. That not right. Fix that. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with genuine people helping us to walk this walk? Some of us want to talk the talk, but we don't want to live it. You understand? Don't let nobody come to you with any negativity and foolishness because when the Lord causes you to stand, it's to cause you to stand against the darkness, against the things that do not please him. He set you there to be a difference. You can't be like everybody else. So let them talk, friends. Let them criticize you. Let them chat you, as we say. Right? She thinks she's holier than thou. Who she thinks she is? Watch her now. <laughs> Just laugh, friends. That's the Holy Spirit convicting them. Something about your life challenges them. 
and that's good, but they just don't see it yet. Let it not be that when somebody have their trash to dump, they come and dump it on you and you become the dumping ground. Here in the BVI, for those who don't live here, we have a dumping site located at an area called Parkwood Pond. Right? It's where all the trash is dumped. Listen, friends, don't become a dump site. When they come with their, their trash, just point them to Parkwood Pond or wherever. Point them down there. You don't have to be the one to absorb all of that mess because it's messing with your spirit. It causes you now to start to look at people in a certain way. Judging them, that's what judging is. Judging wrongfully because you only heard one side of a story. Somebody comes to you and they tell you something that sounds so compelling and a lie them a tell. Lying on the people. Come to find out later on they were the troublemakers. You understand? Don't let anybody do those things. It messes with your walk. That's why you can't pray effectively, fast, right? You don't want to go to church. You don't want to fellowship with the people of God because you have somebody speaking negatively into your ear gate. Be careful of that, friends. You want your life to grow in God. You don't want it to diminish. You want your light to shine. You don't want it to become dull. And it will become dull if you hang around the wrong people. Start evaluating your friends. Who are the people that's influencing my life? Where are they going? Are these people in God? Do they love God? Do they want God? Are they only saying it? But when we gather to pray, they're just chatting a bunch of foolishness. Watch these things, friends. It can take its time and eat away at your Christian walk. It can. Right? I'm learning how to evaluate and to know, okay, don't go there because this is going to be negative. Sometimes people wonder, why is it that we're not friends anymore? And I'm not talking about me deliberately just dropping people. But I say, Father, if they're not for you, just move them out of my life. All right? I'm, I'm learning to accept God's removal of people now. I'm learning to accept it because there was a time when I thought I needed this one and that one. And the Lord said, no, 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 no. I am your source. I am your God, not them. All right? Some people worship their spiritual leaders, their pastors. It's good to honor, love, and obey, and respect. But hey, they're not God. Okay? I had to learn that. They're not God. Some trying to be God in people's lives. Hello? They're not God. Love them. Respect them. Honor them. Give honor where honor is due. That's biblical. It's right. Submit to their authority under God. But if they're going another way, you don't have to go with them. I want the one to show me in the word of God where it says that if a pastor is going the wrong way, I have to follow them or whoever. All right? That's not what godly submission is. So let's not fool ourselves. Some manipulate and control people into thinking that if they don't obey them in everything, that they are disobeying God. Foolishness. I grew up hearing those kind of things. Come, in, come to find out, nothing goes so. They want you to pledge your allegiance to them while they're doing nonsense. No. All right? A lot of them lead in double lives, secret lives, sinful lives, and want you to follow them. No. No way. All right? Let's be careful, friends. Let's be careful that we're not following the crowd. Remember, the Bible declares that narrow is the road that leads to life. All right? And few there be that find it. So if, if we believe that we need a crowd to be on the road to heaven, we're badly mistaken. The crowd wants to stay in the world. The crowd is carnal. The crowd is fleshy. Okay, they give way to the things of the flesh. And that is why some carnal Christians will try to always put you in your place when you try to stand for God. Don't fall for it. I see a lot of it happening in the church, in the body of Christ, even here in my neck of the woods. Want to come and put you in your place, even on social media. But they don't know already. 
that if them are doping me, I conquer and none of them can intimidate me. None. I don't care what title or post they have. If you're not saying God, don't try it. Because I'm not backing down. You understand? Don't try to be a part of the crowd, the in crowd. Oh, so everybody's saying this, so it must be right. The devil is a liar. Sometimes they try to get people to, you know, join with them in their foolishness and then expect you to buckle because you're the only one saying something else. I tell you, the devil lie. All right? Watch the whole of them going to hell in a handbasket. That's what my grandmother used to say. You don't have to join them. Right? Popular opinions is not Bible. I leave that there. Let's pray, friends, because when I say the Lord will cause us to stand, it means that we will also stand. He will cause us to stand against the forces of darkness, against evil, against the spiritual wickedness, even in high places. Okay? Let's stand in God. Father, we just give you praise right now. We thank you, O oh Lord. We bless your holy name because you are good. You are great. You are awesome, O oh God. When I think about your goodness, my soul cries out, Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you once again for sparing us in the British Virgin Islands and the other islands, O oh God, that have already gone through Dorian. Lord, I thank you for sparing lives and limbs. I thank you, O oh God, that your mercy was extended to us. We will never forget your goodness. Lord, when I awoke yesterday and I saw that Things were so much different from what it was two years ago. I had to give you praise and thanks. And today, God, I continue to praise you. And in that vein now, God, I ask you to have mercy upon those who are in the path of this terrible hurricane. Lord, let your mercy stand up for them. Those in the Bahamas, those in Florida, in Georgia, all of the places that this monster is expected to hit. Father, you're the one that speak to the waves and the sea and you say, peace be still. And I'm asking you, God, to cover your people right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Cover them, Lord, just the way you covered us. Yes, Lord, sometimes the storms come to wash out and to cleanse. But I say, God, remember mercy. In your loving kindness, O oh God, remember mercy. Spare your people, Lord. Spare lives, spare lives, spare lives. We speak life, 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 life in the name of Jesus. O oh God, have mercy. Have mercy, Lord. It's not like we deserve anything from you because we're wicked at best. But Lord, your mercy, let your mercy prevail. It is really your mercy, O oh God, that we're crying out for. Because we know, God, that even when we say at times, search me, O oh God, to see if there are wicked ways, we know there are wicked ways. We know, O oh God, that there are wicked ways. And you have been asking your people to repent, 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 turn away. And some do not listen until a storm is coming. But Father, we don't deserve it. We don't deserve it, Lord. So we come humbly, humbly and say, have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, mighty God, on those people in these places. Lord, we pass through it so we know, we know, oh God, that you're rich in mercy. Lord, I remember when Abraham interceded, Lord, and you heard and you answered, but... It didn't work out in that instance, oh God. But I'm saying no, Lord. Let it be that you can find a lot more righteous people praying and interceding and standing in the gap. Even at such a time as this, oh God, so that you would not destroy the cities. Hallelujah. Help us, God. Help us, oh God. Mighty God, help us. Lord. We give you thanks. We believe you hear and you answer prayer. We believe, oh God, that you're going to turn things around. You're going to do something miraculous in this instance, oh God, because 
the forecast don't look good it doesn't look good at all but Lord, we cry out to you for our loved ones, for our friends, even for the strangers, those we don't know. Oh God, have mercy, have mercy. Just like you sent cross, Christ to die on the cross, oh God. When we didn't deserve it, while we were yet sinners, you sent Christ to die for us, Lord. Let this be a moment where we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that is nothing that we deserve. It's just your mercy. So extend that mercy, O oh God. We ask you. We ask you, O oh God. We ask you, Lord, remember mercy. And Lord, those who are listening today, those who are a part of this devotion, bless their lives, O oh God, tremendously. Bless their lives. Cause them, O oh God, to encounter you, not just today, but even throughout the rest of this month, we just have one more day to go. Lord, let there be no accidents or incidents in our lives. Lord, I speak life and I declare it that we shall live and not die to declare your works, O God. We shall live and not die. The adversary has his plans and his plots. But Lord, we cancel them right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, even that explosion that you keep showing me over and over, we cancel it right now. We cancel it wherever that explosion is scheduled to happen. Whatever has been programmed, oh God, into the day or into the weekend or into the months and the weeks to come, we cancel it now. We pull it down in the name of Jesus. We take authority over every evil work, over every evil plan, over every scheme, plot that the adversary has to kill and maim your people father we cancel it now in the name of jesus lord you show us things so that we can do something about it but those hidden things belong to you but the things revealed belong to us so lord when you show us something we will pray we will pray we will pray oh god so I thank you right now, right now in the name of Jesus. And we say, peace be still. Peace be still. Cover your people, Lord. Cover them, cover them. Let them come out of this with a testimony. Let them say, truly there is a God. Because the storms blew, but it did not devour us. Do for them, O oh God, what you did for us here. Thank you, God. You're more than able. Lord, do it. Do it even for the sake of the righteous in the lands, in the nations. Do it, God. We thank you now. We praise you now. We lift up your holy name and we consider it done. In Jesus' mighty name. Even if things intensify, O oh God, let not their heart be troubled. Let them not fear, but cover them, Lord. Hide them, shelter them, grant them a miracle, Lord. Because we know that some of those homes, they cannot even take rain, Lord. So we ask you now for a miracle. Let there be a great testimony in the earth because of what you did. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Do for us now more than we can ask or think. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, 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 amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, our God. Friends, let's keep praying. Let's keep praying for our friends, especially those who have already gone through this. Let's keep praying because we know that God is merciful. We know what he can do. All right? We know what God can do. The most we can do is just pray and say, Lord, have mercy. All right? So we have come now to the end of another devotion. And I, I just want to give God thanks. I want to give him praise. Because things could have been different in our lives today. I'm like so serious about that. On this Friday, this TGIF, thank God it's Friday. Thank God I'm free. 
and today God is first, right? Things could have been different. So let's give God thanks, friends. Let's continue to praise him, magnify his name, because he has proven to us over and over how much he loves us, how much he cares for us. All right? He will cause us to stand. So you go on out now, friends, and you face those giants in the name of Jesus. Because giants do die. Giants do fall. Giants do come down. And when God is on your side, you can face any giant. What are those giants in your life? What are they? Don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. The Lord has not given you a spirit of fear, but one of love, power, and a sound mind. You have a sound mind. Do not let anything drive you crazy or drive you over the wall. And do not utter those words out of your mouth either. Don't say, this thing is driving me nuts. No. Speak life. Speak the answer. Speak the solution. Tell that problem about your God. All right? So you take care now. Let's keep praying, friends. Because by the time we meet again in this fashion, a lot would have happened over the weekend and so on, leading into early next week. So please, let us keep our friends in prayer, all right? It, it's not easy. I could tell you, well, <laughs> oh Lord, I'm not even going over that, but it's not easy at all to know that something is coming your way that has the potential to do much harm. But God is merciful. Let's believe God. Let's believe God on behalf of all that will be affected in some way. All right? So you go on out now to your jobs. Don't let the devil, you know, fool you or intimidate you into staying home because something not right. Because somebody troubling you and somebody causing you great distress. Just hang in there with God. He will cause you to stand. And before you know it, sometimes he just moves them out of your way. But just for now, you go through because you're going to learn some wonderful lessons that you will thank God for afterwards. Oh yes, you will. Because you're going to learn some stuff. You're going to learn things of how people operate. You know, what drives them. What's behind the stuff that they do. You will learn. All right, and the Lord will take care of you. So you have a good weekend now. Go on out to church. Praise God like you never have before. Just give him the glory. Give God the glory. He deserves it. All right. So until we meet again in this fashion, friends, take care.